now to him, God, who is able, look at that word, able, to do. Now, if he just wanted to say to do good, to do well, that would have been enough for us. It really would have. We'd have been happy with that. But he, look what he does. He says to do exceedingly. Then he doesn't stop at exceedingly. He says abundantly. He doesn't stop at abundantly. He says above. And then he wants you to know, I'm going to do all of that. Above whatever you ask or think. But now notice the word accordingly. You have to understand that accordingly means in agreement with. Okay? Accordingly to what? The power that works in us. So he's saying to us, you have the power to produce this that works in you, but what are you using the power for? Stop and think about it. You know, there are, you know, we see, we, we see uh, uh, these, uh, what are they called, chargers and, and these other fast cars on the street now. I mean, man, they hit the pipes and they, and, you know. But when you see them doing that, they don't have their car at full capacity. It still is room for more. Okay? What I'm saying to you, God has given you the ability to live a good life, a different life, with the power that is already in you. See, when you go home tonight, if your lights is off, the power in your house is operating. It takes for you to hit the switch. You have to hit the switch. The switch is not going to come on. I know some houses, they have the sensor lights where you can walk past and come on. I'm talking about if you got a switch in your house, you can stand in a dark room till next week and have lights available to you. But if you do not physically do something to get the lights on, it is not the electrical company's power, uh, problem. It's yours. And a lot of the issues that we've been having is our own problem. We're going to be talking about this. And when I say our own problem, what does it mean? Not saving money. All right? Buying stuff you don't really need. You got nine pair of blue shoes and you went and bought another pair of blue shoes. No, I, I, really, seriously, we have to start being wise with what we do if we plan on going somewhere. Okay? You guys always hear me talking about these big screen TV. You know how Walmart gets y'all. Come on now. <laughs> Come up in there. Walmart got that 65 inch TV and it's, but you don't even need it. Because you take it home and you don't have nowhere to put it. Think about how many things is in your house right now in your closet that you bought and haven't used. I mean, really. I mean, stop and think about it. What you're looking at is your hard-earned finances on a hanger or in a drawer that ain't doing you or nobody else no good. <laughs> Y'all may not like this message. Mm. But the reason I'm teaching this is because I believe that we can all do better. I believe we can. But then again, I tell you, this may not be for everybody. You see what I'm saying? Some people may be comfortable where they're at. And I'm not knocking that. But for those that want to move to a better place, a better position, that is what this message is for. Okay? You know, so, Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know most of you are already familiar with that. <laughs> and it says, now look what God says here. For I know. Let's stop right there. To know something means you have to have personal knowledge of it, perception of it. God says, I, he's talking about himself. I know what? The thoughts. Now, 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 I know the thoughts that I think towards you. What is this scripture saying? He is saying that you are on my mind. That's what he's saying. That I think towards you, says the Lord. Now, thoughts of peace. Okay? And not of evil. Now watch this. I'm going to show you in just a minute. See that word peace right there? Is shalom. That's what it is. And I'm going to tell you what that word means. 
All right, in the Hebrew. And can't nobody change that. So he says, I have thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a hope. Are you living toward, hear what I'm about to say, are you living toward that future and that hope? See, if you're living toward that, you're thinking about that. You're thinking about the things that you can grab and hold on to. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These are the things that you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. These are the things you're planning for. Mm -hmm. See, God is a planner. Mm -hmm. God is an absolute planner. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means you should be a planner too. Amen. I mean, really, you should stop living your life happenstance. Whatever comes up, whatever. You know how they say it now, whatever, whatever. That's the stupidest thing I heard. I mean, really. I think somebody's at the door. That's the stupidest thing that I've heard. Whatever, whatever. Uh, what do you mean? You got you to gotta blow out on the freeway, Chris. And you're going to get out the car and say, whatever. <laughs> that don't even make no sense. That does not make sense. It does not make sense. It really doesn't. See, you have to understand and you need to know that it's not whatever. It's what you're believing for. Yes, Lord. So, God isn't opposed to us being rich. That doesn't upset him or bother him at all, okay? In fact, it delights him. Somebody said, what do you mean it delights God to be rich? All right, you got your Bible. Everything, every scripture I'm showing you right now was in your Bible when you got out your car and walked in here. I didn't put it in here since the message. <laughs> Psalms 35, 27. Now, it says, let the Lord, look at it, <clears throat> let the Lord be what? Magnified, who has pleasure. Now he has what? Pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Okay? That word prosperity is the same uh, here is shalom. Remember when I, I read the word peace over there? It is also the same word, shalom. Look what that word means. Completeness, welfare, and health. That's why when you go to Israel or you see any Orthodox Jew, they greet each other with shalom. Okay? And that's what they're saying to each other. So when we talk about biblical prosperity, we're going to have to understand what truly is biblical prosperity. <laughs> the issue that God has is if you get possessive with money and greed, that's the issue, when it becomes your master. And I've seen people do that. They, they, they in a bind. The company gives them overtime. Boy, that money card coming in. And they, only, they, they done got everything paid off. All the overtime they need, they used everything, but then they just want more overtime. They just want, why? It's because now they're just greedy. You know, they're just greedy. See, you have, to, you have to use money and don't let money use you. And that's being real. You know, um, <laughs> prosperity is more than finances. I'm going to say that again. Prosperity is more than finances. If when you hear the word prosperity, the only thing you think about is money, you don't understand prosperity. You see, on this, it says, John 3, 1 and 2. It says, I pray that you prosper, prosper in all things. Not just in your bank account, but in all things, that you prosper in all things and you be in health, just as your soul, your psyche prosper. See, your prosperity 
is determined by what you put in your head. That's with your finances. That's with your health. That's with everything else. Because he says, as your soul, your mind prosper. See, if we don't start looking at some of the stupid things we do with money, okay, if we don't start looking at it, we're going to just keep living stupid. You know, <clears throat> listen, there's nothing wrong with nice things. What I'm trying to get you to understand, make sure you got the bank to have nice things. Why are you going to pay $1,000 for a person who got $20 to put in it? Right. Something wrong with that picture, baby. <laughs> no, something wrong with that picture. You know, you're going to buy a Rolls Royce and park it outside the projects. And you are you in the window all night long looking to see somebody going to steal it. No, no, we got to stop that. We have to stop. We have to start saying, look, there's a better way of living. Let me get in a, a Honda and go to a nice house. I'm cool. Matter of fact, I ride in my house on a 10 speed. You understand me? It's my house. Do you hear what I'm saying? But what the enemy has been able to do is change our way of thinking. You know, whenever anything comes out popular, we got to have it. You know, I, I, I took my phone. Man, my phone is like eight years old. And I took my phone. I was having some problems. I went over there to T-Mobile. And the guy said, oh, you, you need to upgrade. And I'm like, man, what you mean upgrade? You know, he, it was like we was in a movie. He said, upgrade. I was like, upgrade. <laughs> so he flipped out one of these iPhones. And it was nice. He was, it was pretty and everything. And he said that thing was twelve hundred and something dollars. I started laughing, right? And he said, What funny? What funny? I said, it, what's funny is you think you gonna get me to spend twelve hundred dollars on a cell phone and I got one here I've been using for eight years and ain't nothing wrong with it? Uh uh. I'll keep mine and start smoking in my hand. Do you hear what I'm saying? But see, we wanna stay up on everything. We wanna stay up. Now, I understand. Those iPhones are beautiful things because now they're doing movies and everything with the iPhone. I mean, people are actually filming whole movies with the iPhone. Mm -hmm. They have now in churches where they use the iPhone remotely from instead of regular cameras, okay? But you ain't doing none of that. You ain't doing nothing but talking to somebody for $1,200. Let me move on. <laughs> Oh, man. So, again, I say whenever someone mentions the prosperity gospel, when they say it, normally it's in a negative way. You know, it's always like the preacher want to get your money. Uh, I don't want, well, at least I don't. I can't speak for nobody else. I don't want your money, man. What I'm trying to do is get you some information so you can have some money. You understand what I'm saying? Because there are those of you that want to give into the church, and you can't because of where your finances are right now. Okay. And that's being real. You would love to do that. I mean, really. You know, but you can't right now. But that doesn't mean you won't be able to if we handle the situation right. You know, and for that person, if you're listening to me, that told me that, you know, God, I don't believe everybody should have a house. Please listen through this whole series if you're still listening. Okay? Because that's the issue and problem why you don't have one now. It's because you won't trust God. You won't look bigger than that. You know, again, nothing wrong with an apartment. I don't care if you're living in a mobile home. It doesn't matter. But if you want more, you can have more. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. But you're going to have to do something to get there. Just can't sit on your butt and not do nothing. You have to start. You have to start. Look, look, look. Working this word. That's what you're going to have to do. In, in John 10, and you're familiar with that, John 10, 10, it, Jesus, this is what he says to us. He says, I have come. Now, now notice. I want you to understand. When he says, I have come, now he's about to tell you what his purpose is for coming. I have come that they may Look at it. May have life. He didn't say will have 
abundant life. He said may. See, may leaves it in your ballpark. You know, remember that when you come to mother, may I have a cookie? May you? You know, see, he puts this in your ballpark. Why? It's because you have a responsibility to do your part because he's already done his part. When he sat down, he was done. He said, I, I, he sat down. If you studied anything in the Old Testament, the high priest never sat down in the Holy of Holies. There was not a seat in the Holy of Holies. He could not sit down. So when our high priest sat down, he said, it is finished. I sit down. Now it's on you. It is on you. So, yes, we're going to have to rethink some things. We're going to have to redo some things. You know, I, you heard me say a few weeks back, I told my wife, I ain't buying nothing for six months. It been hard. It been hard for pastor. It been hard. And everything that I want seems like it's on sale now. I'm like, my God, man. <laughs> it's been hard. But I said, no, I'm not going to do this because I'm, I'm trying to reach a goal. You understand? You know, we got to, if we're going to intend on buying a house, we're going to have to start working and making sure our credit is okay. We understand God opens doors and works, you know, miraculously. We understand that. But why not have yourself set anyway? You know, it took time for us to get in a bad position. It's going to take time for you to get out of that position. We have to, see, my mom and daddy didn't teach me about money growing up. And I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't never have to worry about money because they always made sure I had money in my pocket. You know, my dad had his own business and he'd take me to work and I'd sit there and eat hamburgers all day and he'd give me fitted eyes when I come home. So i go to I go every Saturday week. <laughs> you know, but see, I never learned the value of money. Do you hear what I'm saying? A lot of you have come up in the street. You know, you was out there working that thing, slanging that thing, doing what you do, whatever you do, and that money was coming like this. You never had learned the value of money because it came so quick when it left, you were able to get it back and regroup again. So you never learned it. So some of you are learning this for the first time, for the first time of how to say, look, I'm going to manage this. I'm going to manage this. I'm going to work this. Next year, this time, this is where I plan to be. This is where I plan to have my account. This is where I plan to have my credit score. And I know for those of you listening, you don't need no credit score. God will do it. I understand that. But maybe when it, just think about this. Maybe when he shows you the favor, you're going to need that to help too. Uh-huh. See, we got to stop buying cars with 32% interest. In life, shoot, you paying, you look, you bought the car when you were 15, you still paying on you 35. No, I have had to do that. I'm telling you what I know, I've had to do that. I've had to do it. You know, but if that's where you are right now, okay, but let's not stay there. Do you hear what I'm saying? You know, we got to start being more wise with this. I had a friend on a friend of mine. He had on a, um, a Gucci, a, a Gucci shirt, right? And you know, Pastor. I was like, man, I know that thing costs some money. So I, after it was over, I went and googled it. I said, man, that fool paid fifteen hundred dollars for that shirt. No, I, you know I love you, bro. But <laughs> I said, whoa, that was one shirt. But he could afford it. He's living that kind of life, okay? I, c I can't do that. Fifteen hundred dollars. I gotta come up with the whole rack of Ross. Me and Ross, I'm rolling out the door. You know, what I'm saying? you know. See, yeah, in Burlington. See that what what I want you to understand is that there is a better way we're going to move into this. Okay. I want to try to answer your questions about do you tie? What is the tie? All of the week, I got some questions, man, that I'm going to be answering for you during this series that you don't have any doubt. Okay? You don't have any doubt. You know, like some people, I'm not going to get too far in it right now, but some people wonder, 
do I tithe or oh, uh, is the tithe still going on? Look, let me just answer it like this. In the New Testament, starting at Acts all the way to Revelation, the Bible doesn't mention the word tithe at all. All right? It does not. It does not. Okay? But we can still use the principle of the tithe and receive the blessing. Do you hear what I'm saying? My wife and I, we tithe. Not only this church, but other ministries too. And the reason we do that is because of what we believe. Now, if a person doesn't believe, you understand me, that's fine. But some people will use that because they don't want to give no way. You know that person always come to the potluck and don't bring nothing but, but, but some paper plates, some paper plates and the napkins. <laughs> Every year you bring the same thing. So you've got to understand there are those that don't want to do it no way. Right. So it's no need to get into a debate about that. If that person loves Jesus, okay, that's, that's fine enough for me. You love Jesus, man. We, we don't have to debate about that, okay? You have to learn to live your life the way you intend to and allow someone else to live theirs the way they intend to. So, the Lord desires that you be made completely whole in every area, okay? Every area. So when I start to talk about biblical prosperity, let's look at what it really is, okay? And he can bring it up. There it is. In every, there's a spiritual prosperity. That means that you're growing. Prosperity means increase. That you're spiritually growing in the word, okay? Growing in your prayer life. Growing in these areas. Then you have an emotional prosperity and that's where the enemy really wants to hit most people the hardest because your emotions are going to control 85% of what you do so God wants you to be healed and whole in your emotional uh, uh, prosperity area then you have physical prosperity you know hey look we just now coming into this thing about eating right and everything you understand me Shoot, man, you know, come on, before all this stuff, man, I'll stand up, you know, every kind of pork it was. You understand know I me? Mean? I'm serious. I ain't want no salad. My wife used to tell me a couple years ago, you need to eat salad. I go get a hamburger. And she said, I said salad. I said, look, lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles. You know, you know, but now we're coming in that we need to do more and we're learning this. Our bodies are getting older. We have to understand this to be real, Okay. So it's a phys you, you, you can have prosperity in your physical relationships, prosperity in relational relationships. What does that mean? Learning to grow, not only in your marriage, but in your, your business relationships, in your family relationships. You know, learning how, how to keep things from just overwhelming you, okay? Just overwhelming you, stopping that. You know, sometimes we live so much in the past about things that have happened in the past, we can't even enjoy nothing in the future. I don't know why she treated me like that. She lied on me and did all of that. That was six years ago. <laughs> you still tripping on that? They ain't even thinking about you no more. Right. Right. See, but do you see what I'm saying? So because of that, you are in, in, in a relational place of distress, okay? You are. And then you have success, prosperity, you know? And we're going to talk about these today, success, prosperity, and then financial prosperity. I put that last because you need to have all these other ones to be a wholeness. You understand what I'm saying? We don't have to live beneath anymore. No, we don't. God's going to meet you right where you at and take you to where he wants to take you if you follow with him. Okay? See, 
That same friend I told you had that old fifteen hundred dollar Gucci shirt on. Man, I, you know, I, I looked it up. I said, Yeah, I'm gonna be able to buy one. We'll put my money in the bank. Gucci, Gucci ain't finna ride on my chest, and I'm gonna pay fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> That's just me. You can say, Oh, Pastor, just cheap. I am. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Uh, don't, don't even go there. There, see, for y'all that ain't in the church. Look, frugal, yeah, frugal, 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 yeah, not cheap, frugal. But my, you know what, my only problem is books and clothes. That's it, that's it. And and now I'm learning how to work with that. But see, I'm I'm being honest because I'm teaching you that I have to even be disciplined in this because I want more in my life not only for me, but for my family, for my kids. So I have to keep it right. You understand? See, I can't have that street mentality I had 30 years ago. You, know, you see, I can't. Because, see, I understand everything in the street don't last. No, it don't. I tell, and, 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 and look, 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 look. Let me tell you something. And, uh, and if you listen to me and you out there in the street, <laughs> just listen for a minute. How many times have you stacked your money and got it all right? And you, you, you like, woo, yeah, I'm fine at that. Then you catch a case, spend every dime on attorneys, bail out for the rest of the money, and then come home, and now you got to start all over, and you still got an attorney that got his hand so deep in your pocket, he's scratching your toes. <laughs> See, don't tell me about this. I know. See, I know. And then the enemy has a way of every time you're walking in a court, you wonder if you're going to walk back out. I know. It's the arraignment. Many times people walked in arraignment and didn't walk out. Okay? We do not need to live that way. We don't. Those days are over. They're behind us. Now it's time for us to start really getting information into our minds that need to be grasped, held on to, and applied. All right, let's talk about spiritual priority, prosperity, excuse me. To prosper spiritually, you must first be born again. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and make him the Lord of your life, your spirit is reborn and brought into fellowship with the Father. Okay, that's how you start working on your spiritual prosperity. See, everything that I'm teaching is for someone that has connection with God. A person that doesn't have connection with God, as it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, this is not going to work for you. Okay, it's not. But for every one of you listening to me, it will work for you. It will work for you. Let me put it like this. When you bought your car, you didn't buy your car to work for your car. You bought your car to work for you, right? When you get in your car, you intend it to start, right? If it doesn't start, you will say, you know what? I got a problem. No, you will say the car broke. You won't say you broke. The car broke. It ain't working. God has given you something that you must work. And the problem is we haven't been working it. Again, I want to remind you, this is not for everybody. It's not. You're going to have people say, I don't believe that. I don't. I don't care. I really don't. What I teach you is what works in my life. You know, you know my wife was witness. The other day, we sold something. And and, and, and 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 it was even before the end of the day, right? Yeah. We got back, somebody sold back into us double what we gave. Then right after that, we sold something. And that same day, yeah. got a check. Mm -hmm. I said, look at God. Yeah. Yeah. Because we keep seed in the ground. Yeah. We keep seed in the ground. Okay? Yeah. And we was laughing. And all this was in one day. We was laughing. You know why we were laughing? Because we were so happy that God is such a, a God of his word. And I told you a few weeks ago, 
if you think that your blessings only come in money then you don't understand the God that you serve when you see something happen and your child is protected that's God moving on your behalf uh huh when you see certain things see you are reaping from your harvest just stop always looking for it to be dollar signs okay so emotional prosperity true peace and joy cannot be found in the world without Christ it can't it can't it really can't and I tell you this for myself it can't that's why we see people in broken relationships that's why we see so many divorces now okay people on antidepressants you know people committing suicide you know we see so much of this why it's because their emotions aren't stable God wants to stabilize every believer's emotion okay and when a person's emotions are not stabilized the enemy has a lot of activity you know that he will cause in their mind and this is why we have to pray this is why prayer is so important you know people that are emotionally drained or mixed up they use their mouth to tear down other people you know <laughs> we have people now today that's questioning their gender okay this is emotional this is emotional okay we have it starting now in schools you know where little kids are telling their parents I don't know what I am heck you mean when I was back in I was growing up we didn't have nothing but some cowboy cow you was either a cowboy or you was an Indian you know, that's all we had, and a wooden horse to run, run up down the street with. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? But this comes because people are becoming so mixed up with so much. And if you really look at it, the enemy is starting it at a young age. A young age. Okay? You know, so... <coughs> You don't tear another person down because of their lifestyle. You pray for them. Okay? You pray for them. You know, we have so much hostility now. You know, I mean, people are just doing things, you know, the, uh, what is it? L, L, come on, y'all. Yeah, L, what? LGBTQ. LGBTQ. See, I, I just like ABC. <coughs> people are being so hateful toward them now. Men, they, God, they were created by God just like us. You know, Jewish people, Asian people. This is the society that we're living in, and a lot of that is because people are emotionally messed up. We have to pray. We have to pray about this. You know, every day you look up, there's another mass shooting. My God, I just looked at one, and I didn't know till this morning it was in... Uh, Dallas, Texas. And the first thing I had to do was check my phone because I got two daughters that live right in that city. Allen, Texas. I was like, uh-oh. And one is a police officer. And I was like, wow. You know, God wants more for us and we ought to be able to give him more to get more. Is that, I I isn't that fair? Jesus fills the void in us he brings answers thank you Lord where there are questions he brings confidence where there's insecurities he brings hope where there is no hope then there's a mental prosperity the world thinks of mental prosperity as simply being smart knowing it all <laughs> But God has something much better in mind. Mental prosperity includes revelational and divine knowledge. Whenever you hear me use the term revelational knowledge, revelational knowledge is something that doesn't come by human capacity. It comes directly by God. Okay? It comes from God. You know, so that's the type of me mentality he wants us to have where we're tapped in with him. Okay? Mental abilities beyond our own. 
Mm -hmm. And a sharp mind we should always have until the day we go home to be with the Lord. See, I want you to understand that God loves you. Any choices you make in your life, God still loves you. He does. Never doubt that. Because see, in John 3.16, it says God so loved the world. Okay? He didn't say he just loved his children. He said he so loved the world that he gave. Okay? He gave his only begotten son. But people stop right there. The very next verse says, so that none would perish. See, God, God has given every one of us the ability to choose the life that we want to live. Whatever life you want to live, he does not interfere with that. He says, you know what? He's given us choice. And if you don't believe it, when Adam knew he, he was going to mess up by eating the fruit, right? God could have stopped him. He could immediately knock that whatever it was out of his hand and said, no, you're not going to eat this. He allowed Adam and Eve to make the choice that they made. And God, knowing all things, knew the choice that they were going to make before they made it. Amen. But God is banking that his love toward you will bring you back to a place that you'll make the right decision. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, this is where you have to make that decision for your own life. He gave you life. You could do whatever you want with it. But stop using your life like you do when you rent a car. They tell you put super premium in there, you put the bottom grade. You, they tell you don't run over rocks and you all up and doing in, in, in the dirt. <laughs> you know, come on now. The next one is physical prosperity. See, the world system of healing makes the hospital God, makes the doctor God. That's the world system, okay? But see, that leaves God completely out. Years back, I had a doctor that was a believer, and there are some good ones that are believers that would talk to you about God. And whenever I went to his office, he, we would pray and you know, whatever the case may be, and then he'd give me my checkups and things of this nature, you know. But my doctors that I have now, we never talk about God unless I'm doing the talking, okay? See, that's the world system of health. God's intent for your life is that you live in a place of divine health. That is what his intent for us. You will have challenges, you know, that may come on you. But see, that's where, yes, you give it to God and you go to the doctor. I ain't telling you don't go to the doctor. The Bible says, hey, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father's lights. Medicine and doctors are a good thing. Do you hear what I'm saying? But our, our mentality for us as physical prosperity would say that first I have to give my situation to God. Now, if God wants to heal me directly himself, or God wants to use the doctor, whichever way he wants to do it, I'm accepting it. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? But see, we're talking about prosperity and a fullness, not just in part, not just with money. What good does it do to have money, you understand me, and you can't spend a dime? Baby, was I three months y'all knew I was in that hospital? I didn't spend a dime in that hospital. I was in there just stretched out in the bed for three months. Matter of fact, I didn't even think about spending no money. See, you have to understand, the Bible said God adds riches with no sorrow. Okay? So you're going to have to believe and trust him for that. You're going to have to say, hey, I am where I am. You may have uh, uh, a 50 cent in your pocket right now. Okay, that's fine. That's where you see. That's where you, you, you say God meet me where I am. He gonna meet you with that fifty cent, okay? And you're gonna trust him to grow that from there. You're gonna trust him from wherever you're at. You're gonna trust him to grow you from there, okay? Then we have relationship prosperity. Only God can truly prosper a person in this area. 
than relationships. He is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And God can bring reconciliation. Reconciliation to any broken relationship. But a lot of times we're trying to fix the relationship. That means that I have the relationship in my hand trying to fix it. And that's just human nature. Instead of giving that relationship to God and let him fix it. Trusting him. You know. So. Just allow him to do the reconciliation need. Needed. See where the world says all hope is lost. It's not all lost with God. It's not all lost with God. Okay. It's not. Um. Some of my family, we we broke off speaking years ago, 30 plus years ago. And was it last week? I, yeah. I couldn't find the person that God put on my heart is in my family. I couldn't find him. I tried five years ago. Couldn't. Last week I was sitting at the computer, and, and I know when the Lord said, look for him, look for him. <laughs> and I, no, I'm serious. That's why I sit there at my desk. So I look on Google, call some of the numbers, you know, nothing. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. No, I'm serious. I was like, cool. So I went on about my business. In about 15 minutes, he said, look some more. And so I still had it. You know how Google gives you the listing up? I still had it up. And so I just strolled down and I started seeing different numbers. Anyway. I called one of the different numbers. It was his house phone. It was his house phone. <clears throat> and we hadn't spoken in 30 some years or more than that. I mean not spoken a word. But let me show you how God used this man and I was able to tell him when I had him on the phone. Their family is, 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 is in Ohio right now. He lives in Washington, D.C. And years back before I was saved, I was going down there, you know, with my other cousin. And so I, I picked up him and, you know, went to the house, my aunt's house. And my aunt had 16 kids, three sets of twins. So when I come in the house, this young man runs up and grabs me. Man, I'm like, man, what the heck? You know, I'm, you know. I wasn't into that love touchy thing, you know. And so when we got in the car, I asked my cousin Alex, I said, Alex, something wrong with Delbert, man? <laughs> he said, what you mean? He said, no, nah, man, he just be talking about that Jesus all the time. See, I didn't know anything about that. And then when his whole family and I lost contact, and here I am calling him. See, this was God's reconciliation. When I had him on the phone, he says, hey, man, you know what? I'm due to be out, you know, in L.A. in a couple of weeks because he's an architect. And he says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be stopping there. So he says, I'm going to stop a couple of days. We can hang out, man. Then I got to go fly to Mexico for my job. He says, and I'm just getting ready. He said, in a couple of weeks. See, let God do it and you get out the way. Stop trying to make something happen. And let God let it happen. Amen? Amen? Have a couple of more and then I'll be done. The success prosperity. Success prosperity, in other words, is favor. God will give you favor with people. See, when you have favor, it opens doors. It really does. It opens doors. All right? And it causes things to just go your way. You know, and you don't even know how they're going your way. It just, it's just like, wow, man. You know, so they just want to do something to help you. You don't even know these folks. See, that's God's favor on your life. You have to understand that, see, when you're a child of God, you have that type of favor. And you should walk with that type of attitude. That God is going to send somebody into my life that's going to be a blessing in my life. You hear me say it all the time. All you need is one person to come in your life and change your life. Right? I'll give you an example. I know y'all done heard about T.D. Jakes, right? Raise your hand if you heard T.D. Jakes. 
That's just about everybody in here, right? Every look. T. D. Jakes was on, on on Praise the Lord. Let me show you how God uses people. He was on Praise the Lord. He, it wasn't even his show. He came on because Carlton Pearson, somebody was uh, uh, no show, called him. He got his name. Somebody gave him his name, called him, put him on the show. He in there preaching. Paul Crouch, the owner of the show, had left. Had left. Paul Crouch said this out of his mouth. He said whenever he left the studio, he never, ever watched it on TV. He just went home because he was there all day. This particular day, he said he was in the kitchen making a sandwich and decided to turn it on. When he turned it on, he said he, he seen this big black heavy man in a purple suit preaching. And he said, who is that? One person. Do you hear me? That's all you need in your life is one person. For God's favor that's on your life. See, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things that, that, that we need to really adjust in our life. But I believe the first thing that we need to adjust is our thinking. We need to st really work on that hopelessness thinking. That I can't do it thinking. I am not smart enough thinking. I am the wrong color thinking. I am too old thinking. We got to readjust that. Because everything I just mentioned, when you're thinking that way, it's you making yourself the person that's able to do it. When you readjust your thinking, you say, I ain't worried about my age because God's still young. <laughs> I ain't worried about not having no money because God is very rich. I don't need all that education because my God is really smart. See, you got to stop thinking about where your limitations are and start thinking about God is unlimited. We have had people tell us negative things about ourselves for years. And some of them have convinced us that it's true. God wants to show you it's not true. God wants you to see yourself in the same eyes that he sees himself. And what happens is this. If you have on a pair of blue shades, everything out there is blue. But the moment you change the shade to a yellow, everything changes. When you start looking at things the way God sees you, everything's going to change. Everything's going to change. Will those thoughts stop coming up in your head? No, man, but that's where, you know, you, hey, man, I'm, I'm not, uh-uh, no, no, I'm going to get this done. And I'm not going to get it done in my strength. I'm going to get it done in God's strength. People, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And I'm telling you what's worked in my life. Okay? I'm telling you what worked in my life. From from an ex-convict walking out having nothing on and nothing but a pair of jeans and that blue shirt. And I think I had 60 some dollars that gave me $200 out the gate. And I spent most of it to get back home and get something to eat. And everything that you see is what God has done. What God has done. And I mean, you know, it's like he ain't through with me and he ain't through with you. You know, I think Psalms 1, if you could bring that up, Psalms 1, verses 1 through 6, and I'm going to close with this for you, and we're out of here. Mm. And I want you closely to look at this particular scripture. Yes, Psalms 1, I'm going through verses 1 through 6. And those of you, if you don't have this bi this marked in your Bible, you should at least try to mark it and read it on a regular basis. All right. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. It says, verse 1, Blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the person, the man or the woman, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. 
a lot of you have been getting your information from ungodly people but God says blessed is the person that does not walk and get their counsel from that person nor stand in the path of sinners nor stand in the path of sinners okay what does that mean you know some places you should be you ain't got no business being you know that you know that so when you when you know that you don't need to be a place man kick rocks get away from there you know what I'm saying? get away from there because if you stay in a place long enough it could change you and if you keep visiting it will change you learn to get away from that learn to say hey no uh -uh, I'm, I'm cool with that I'm not going to I'm not going to uh -uh, no no I tell you what I have a friend that uh, he he barbecues and he does it professionally, and he got one of them big old smokers, you know, put that stuff in there. And Tony be cooking that stuff, man. And one day I was hanging out with him, Fab, and you know we were just talking and smoking and everything. We were just talking. Then you know, I got in the car and I was driving. I was going, man, my car on fire. <laughs> it was like, but what had happened? It had gotten in my clothes. And I could smell that hickory and stuff. See, that was just standing there. That's what happens to us when we're in the wrong environment. I understand you like your friends. I understand you grew up with your friends. I understand all of that. But you have to make a decision and say, hey, man, I, I, I still care about you, man, but I can't kick it like we used to, huh? Mm -mm. See, man, you be talking. Because I make a joke out of some of the old people I run into. I say, man, you know you still crazy, man. I ain't crazy no more, okay? See, you have to tell them. It's not that you don't love them. It's just you have outgrown them. Okay? If I can help you, I want to help you. All right? But I'm not going to have you tear me back down by hanging out like this. You know? It says, bless is the man or the woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But, his delight is in the law of the Lord. In other words, we should be people that are delighting in the word of God. You know, delighting. What does that mean? That doesn't mean you're reading a book a day. Or, you know, that means read something every day. You eat every day, don't you? Yes, Lord. Uh -huh, yeah, don't lie. I could look at you and say some of y'all eating two, three times a day. All right? Just like you eat every day. All right? You should feed your spirit every day. Okay? So it says, oh boy, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates day and night. Amen. That word meditate, it, it doesn't mean where you sit on the floor and don't say anything. That word in the Hebrew, in his Hebrew setting means that to murmur, to murmur, speak lowly. In other words, you're talking to yourself about the scriptures that you read, okay? Now, look at verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. So he said, if I don't do those things and I do delight myself in your word, I will be like a tree, like a tree that brings forth its fruit in its season. See, some of you, just because you're not bearing fruit right now, that just means that you're not in your season. Have you ever been to the grocery store and went to get some fruit and they said it's out of season? And then they tell you to be in and this, you know, and you wait till then. That doesn't mean that you're not being productive. That just means you have to stand tough for your season. It says that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. In other words, the leaf is the what protects the heat. And it's also the leaf it's also where the fruit gets its nourishment from, okay? And whatever he does shall prosper. Notice, whatever you lay your hands to, that's a promise from God, shall prosper. If you what? Delight yourself in him. Again, as I close with this last slide, 
I want you to look at this slide. I want you to take a good look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one more slide after that. This is the, there you go. I put this up here because when it talks about Psalms 1, I want you to look at this picture while I read this. Blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, but nor stands in the seat of sinners, nor sits in the sits in the seat of scornful. But his delight is but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. Look at those trees. When I seen this picture, I was like, man, the fruit is beautiful. The grass is beautiful. But see, it's the river in the middle of this that's feeding both of them. And it's going to be the word of God that's going to be feeding your life that you can be productive. Amen? Amen. And like I said, hey, it's not for everyone. It's not. It's not for everyone. It's really not. It's for those that will grab it. Those that will hold on to it. And you probably say, well, Pastor, how do you know that? I know that because being in seven penitentiaries in the state of California, chaplains were coming in talking to all of us on every penitentiary yard, on every yard. Folsom, Solidad, Susanville, CMC, every yard. But everybody wasn't getting that word. Everybody didn't accept that word. It was available to them, but they did not accept it. I thank God that I was able to accept it. I was able to say, hey, you know what? I done tried everything else, man. I'm, f I'm, I'm finna go whole hog with this. Sit down, Jelani. Jelani. There you go. See, so it's your decision. Amen. All right, we have some visitors here. Let me see. We got Michael, Big Mike. What's that? <laughs> Amen. We got his brother Vincent. Praise God. These are long-term friends of ours, and I thank God that you chose to visit us, both of you. Appreciate it, man. I'm seeing y'all come through the door, man. I said, Oh, look here, family coming in. <laughs> Amen. I know you will, man. Seeing you come a long way, man. Yeah. And then we got Christopher. <laughs> I like the way you put it. I got to say it real special. Christopher. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for coming and joining us. You know, um, we have, if I can get Lisa to give these, each one of them, we have a little something for you, for the men. And that is just something that you could read. You know, one minute, man, and just one minute. Every day, you know, you have something, you're going through something, just pop it open, read it. You know what I mean? <coughs> I read it myself. All right. I am out of here. Is there any questions about anything that I've said? Or Oh, yeah, I forgot. We are <laughs> still about to walk off and lead a live stream. Hey, for everyone watching this on live stream, I'd like to thank you and praise you. If you don't know who I am, I am Pastor Miller, the great I Am Faith Center. I'd like to give you four invitations. The first one, if you've never accepted Christ into your life, you do it like it says in Romans 10, 9, and 10. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. The next one is, <coughs> if you feel that you're not sure about your relationship and your bond with Christ right now and you feel you may be in a backslidden position, Hey, just ask God to forgive you. First John 1, 9 is simple. It says, confess with your mouth your sins to the Lord, and he is just and faithful to what? Forgive you. Simple as that. And ask him to help you. The third, the third is, if you'd like to partner with this ministry, you know, hey, we're here for you. But I suggest that you find a good church in your area, one that's teaching the Bible, one that's near you, you know, that you can grow in. 
until you do you are really welcome to continue to partner and fellowship with us we'd love to have you we'd love to have you again god bless you thank you and let's all give the people out there in in what they call it social media land let's give them a clap amen thank you for joining us today god bless i'm out